Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here to talk to you about the symphonies and some other orchestral works by Johann Fensel Kalevoda. Now, Kalevoda's dates, let me see, I have them right here, were 1801 to 1866. He wrote seven symphonies and, and literally dozens and dozens of other orchestral pieces, including 24 concert overtures and many, many shorter works. Now, one of the reasons I think that Kalavoda's reputation has declined, and it didn't deserve to, this guy is a major guy, I'm telling you, this is serious, serious stuff. He was very, very gifted, and his music is just marvelous. But I think like a lot of Czech composers from the, the early stages of the 19th century, before we really had serious romantic nationalism got going, uh, he wasn't German. And although he spent most of his career working in Germany, as did most conductors from that area, from Central Europe, that was the market. And it may just be because early musicology and music history was largely German-based. A lot of these composers who, who deserve credit for what they did were simply ignored, whereas quite a few German composers who may not have deserved as much credit were not ignored. Although, frankly, from the first half of the 19th century, I mean, the only German composers after Beethoven that we care about are, are Mendelssohn and Schumann, who wrote symphonies, that is, symphonists. And even those two are somewhat controversial. Kalavoda's first symphony was published in 1825. His dates were 1801 to 1866. So he, he, was, he was young. He was 24 years old. And this was only one year after Beethoven's ninth. But already were in a completely different world. And that symphony was very, very strongly admired by Schumann, who sort of cribbed the uh, opening um, of the scherzo of Kalavoda's first symphony for the own scherzo of his fourth symphony in D minor. It's very, very interesting, and they are quite, quite similar. In fact, I'm going to play it for you. The first symphony has been recorded. Here it is. It's on the chorus label. Frieder Bernius has been doing them. And it's coupled here with with a, a delightful concertino for violin and orchestra, which isn't so concertini. Well, it's about 15 minutes long, but there's there's another one that's like 20 minutes long. They're, they're fairly substantial works. And there's an introduction and variations for clarinet and orchestra from 1844. But the symphony is 1825, and just listen to the opening of the scherzo, and you will hear, essentially, the opening of the scherzo of Schumann's Fourth Symphony. <laughs> See what I mean? I'm not kidding. Now that's on Karus, and I recommend this disc very, very strongly because here it is. So you can see it a little more closely, I think right there. There you go. It's terrific music. I mean, the guy was really, really gifted, melodically gifted, and, and his his handling of form is very shapely, and and together he's not he's not your average Kleinmeister, if you want to call him that. And some of you may recall, one of the early videos I did was devoted to his three string quartets, which are absolutely fabulous. And if you haven't heard them, you must hear them. They're marvelous. And I highly recommend that you just watch the video and listen to the samples that I had there. They are really, really, really good. Now, Kalavoda wrote seven symphonies over the course of his career. They are very, very interesting works, and they've all been recorded, although finding them all is a little bit, a little bit challenging. But here they are on these, on these, let's see, three or four CDs. Did I miss one here? One, two, three, I'm missing one. Uh, let me see, where's the, oh, there it is. Thank you, I have an assistant. Excuse me, assistant, if you would be so kind. Thank you very much. That was my partner, Sean, assisting. And I now have, I now have all of the Kalavoda symphonies. So let's, let's, we just saw number one. Here are two and four on CPO. This is with the, the Kölner Academy, the Kölner Academy under Michael Alexander Villens. This is not my favorite disc in this series. I think, I think Villens hadn't quite gotten his act together in the performance thing, although things have gotten better there. It's not a bad disc by any means, but I don't think it shows the music in the strongest possible light. Number three is here on, on uh, MD&G, 
coupled with one of the 24 concert overtures is overture number 12 and his introduction in rondo for horn and orchestra. And, you know, what's really fascinating about the third symphony is that the main melody of the first movement is based on an atonal fragment that he had his, his toddler daughter pound out at random on the piano, and he vowed to make a symphony out of it. And he does. It's really quite fascinating to hear how he does it. And then we have, let's see, numbers five and six. This is also Frieder Bernius on Orfeo with the Hofkapelle Stuttgart. Very, very good performances, by the way, if you can still find them. It's absolutely beautiful. And really, the fifth is, I think, after the first, the Kalavoda Symphony to really, you know, get yourself started with. There's also a disc, and we're going to come back to that in a second, of the two violin concertinos, one of which is coupled with the first symphony there. As I've already mentioned, the second concertino is 22 minutes long. It's really concerto length. It's a serious work and quite lovely. And three of the concert overtures, numbers three, seven, and ten. This is also with the Kölner Academy and Michael Alexander Villains, and it's much more successful, I think, than his recordings of Symphonies two and four. It's a fine, fine disc, and it's getting it's getting some airplay. The overture number three was actually um, being performed uh, and played on WQXR here in New York as as I was. I was driving over here to the overflow room in Connecticut. They were playing this overture, which was really nice. I mean, Calavota is getting some play on the radio because it's really, really good music. So the best introduction, in my view, to Calavota's music is this disc right here. Symphonies numbers 5, 7, and overture number 16 with Das Neue Orchestra under Christoph Sperring or sparing if you're German, however you want to pronounce it. This is really, really hot stuff. And I'm going to play you a couple examples from it just to, just to show you what I mean. Now, the slow movement of Symphony No. 5 is an allegretto grazioso that is one of the most delicious pieces of music you will ever hear in your life. I mean, it could be a, a, a little Tchaikovsky ballet movement or something. I don't know. It's fascinating to listen to this and play Guess the Composer because it's it's remarkable the tune is so catchy holy crap it's fabulous so let's listen to a little bit of the slow movement which isn't that slow of symphony number no. 5 lovely? Isn't it unforgettable? I mean, it really is. And I know you're going to run out and grab this symphony if you don't already have it, because you won't be able to live without it, I assure you. And now the finale, just so you get a sense of what he's doing in an allegro, this is a period instrument performance. It's just a knockout. It's really great. And the opening theme of the finale really has a proto-Dvorak kind of sound. You can tell the guy is Czech. He wrote the Fifth Symphony in 1840. So we're talking 20 some odd years before Dvorak got going. And Dvorak didn't really get going until the 1870s. And, and this is recognizably Czech romantic music. It's quite wonderful. Here's the opening of the finale. <laughs> that, you're really going to like the Seventh Symphony, too. I mean, it's, it's in the same, the same general sort of atmosphere and category. I mean, this is good music. It never deserved 
to disappear or be neglected. And I really hope that there will be many more recordings forthcoming by, by you know, fine conductors. I'd like to see one conductor do a whole series together on one label with one person so we can get a real sense of, you know, the evolution from work to work, because there was. I mean, Calavota's style became more recognizably romantic as he, as he aged. And one of the works that really shows it is on this disc. It's this overture number 16. It's in A minor. He liked minor keys, which is also, I think, a function of his Slavic background, because all five of the, of the seven symphonies are all in minor keys, which is pretty remarkable, actually, given the period. But this overture in A minor is really astounding. It reminds me quite a bit of Sibelius. It really does. I, I mean, it has that kind of kind of bardic, almost almost like on saga, you know, or something like that. I mean, the tunes are all different, of course, but it, it gets under your skin in the same way. It has that primal bardic quality that's wonderful. Let me play you. It has two basic themes. I'm going to play both of them for you because you've really got to hear them. Here is the opening theme of the Allegro from this overture. And then the second theme after a big buildup and climax is a, a, a total lyrical contrast. And again, you'll hear it, you'll go, gee, I heard that before. Who does that sound like? But it, it isn't anybody else. It, it, it's Kalavoda. Listen to this. I think you get what I'm talking about here. This is this is music of tremendous color and character and and melodic interest. It's just good, good music. This guy knew what he was doing. And as I said, he never deserved to fall into complete neglect. I mean, it seems to me astonishing that, you know, they were still playing Spohr symphonies, for example, throughout the 19th century, but they weren't playing Kalavoda. These are much better. They're infinitely better. They're, they have rhythmic backbone. They have, they have real thematic distinction. Fascinating, fascinating works. And so that is just a quick little taste of what you can what you have in store for you if you take the plunge and start to collect Kalavoda. Great stuff, great stuff. And and this CPO disc, really, with Christoph Spiering and das Neue Orchestra is, is absolutely the way to go with Symphonies 5, 7, and the Overture in A minor. It's, it's still available as a disc, I checked, and it's downloadable from Amazon and other places, and, and you really ought to hear it. Sit down, give it a listen, and you will be absolutely, inevitably impelled to keep on listening to Kalavoda. Thank you, folks. Take care.